Hello and welcome to this Red Gamer Tech video, myself Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today to start things off I have a couple of updates regarding Radeon 7, as of course AMD took to the stage not too long ago to tell us to skinny on what they were doing with the brand new GPU. So what updates do I have for you today my friends? Before I get into that, I just want to quickly say, if you guys haven't seen not only the video Paul did yesterday, but the day before that, do check them out as all of the nitty gritty details that AMD have already discussed about Radeon 7 and the updates to them just yesterday, they are all there for your perusal. So I have another update for you today, as Lisa Sue has made some comments on ray tracing and she did confirm in her post keynote press roundtable that they are working on this particular technology she said quote I think ray tracing is important technology it's something that we're working on as well from both a hardware and software standpoint and they were also directly asked about where they stand on ray tracing by pcworld.com and they did respond to this and she said quote I'm not going to get into a tip for tat that's just not my style so I tell you that what I will say is ray tracing is an important technology it's one of the the important technologies there are lots of other important technologies and you hear more about what we're doing with ray, tra ray tracing you know we certainly have a lot going on both hardware and software as we bring up that entire ecosystem we view it as a broad ecosystem we don't just focus on the one technology so her meaning there is pretty clear. They are looking at ray tracing, but they're not just tunnel visioning on that one thing. She's definitely correct about ray tracing. It's certainly interesting and it has a lot of potential as a technology, especially given that it is in its infancy. I know it has it really has sort of not caught on all that well yet of course there's a lot of criticism uh, not only surrounding ray tracing at its present state but also touring as well. Um, but I do think ray tracing has potential, it's just obviously, it's still in its infancy, it's a lot of work to be done, and we do need to see more games actually implement it, and obviously the sort of demands that it has to be sort of better answered by the hardware, all that sort of thing, so AMD are obviously going to be looking at it, but are they just looking at just that? The answer here is clearly no. Now we also have a, some more comments on what they're actually up to with their 7NM lineup for 2019 from Mark Papermaster in an interview with The Street. And basically they asked him about their plans for the graphics division. Of course there's going to be a link to their article in the description below this video so do check that out. But he said, quote, what we do over the course of the year is what we do every year. We'll round out the whole roadmap. We're really excited to start on the high end. You'll see the announcement over the course of the year as we round out our Radeon roadmap. So what does this actually mean? Well, basically it means we're going to see more products using the 7NM process technologies at, of course, different price points. So we've got the Radeon 7 and we are undoubtedly going to see lower end things as well. And again, just things at different price points and all sorts of different SKUs, all that sort of thing. So this is pretty much what they've done in the past. They start out with one thing and they just sort of beef things out as they go on down the year. So this is very much sort of in line with AMD's strategy in the past. And of course, not just their strategy by any means. We've kind of seen similar with touring where we saw just the sort of 2080 tie, 2018, 2070 detail. Then obviously we've seen the 2060 and then there's UTX 1180 and all this other stuff. So yeah, we are going to be seeing more of Radeon 7NM in 2019. So we're going to move on now to an update regarding Matisse. Now this update is thanks to anantech.com. Of course there is going to be a link to their article in the description below this video so do check that out if you're at all curious. So one of the things that again we did see at CES was new CPU design codename Matisse. It has two chiplets and an IO die on a single package and the layout shown definitely showed that there's space for another CPU chiplet so a lot of question marks are hanging over a lot of heads as to whether or not there will ever be a version of this where we will see a graphics 
chip added on there to make an APU. At least at the moment, AMD are saying no. There will not be a version of the current Matisse chiplet layout where one of these chiplet is going to be graphics. So this doesn't mean we're not going to see any Zen 2 with integrated, integrated graphics. That's obviously insane. Um, but these are going to be built on a different design. So this is just for Matisse, this particular variant of Matisse. So what we saw there, we're never going to see that with a graphics chiplet on there. We're never going to see that particular design used for an APU. There's obviously going to be variants on this in the future that we do see a graphics chiplet on there and there's obviously going to be a different design entirely being used for Zen 2 APUs, all that sort of thing. So essentially TLDR, we're not going to see the current version of Matisse surface itself as an APU. So let's move away from AMD for the sort of last segment of the video as we move over to Amazon. Now we have a very interesting report from the website The Information which basically states that Amazon are building a game streaming service in a similar vein to what we have seen from Microsoft's Project xCloud. But we are not going to be seeing hide nor hear of it, at least if this report is accurate, until at least 2020. But according to their sources, Amazon has apparently been in talks with game publishers to gauge their interest in obviously putting their games on the upcoming service. Now, this is not exactly surprising. Amazon are pretty much sort of already primed to do something like this with their existing AWS cloud infrastructure which is already used by a lot of game developers obviously we have seen them try to dip their toes into sort of the gaming world before um well they have tried to build some game development studios and stuff like that in the past but obviously it hasn't really gone super well for them but if they can get it right this potentially could be pretty huge for them as they already have of course a lot of the infrastructure in place and the infrastructure they do need to add well it's going to be easy for them to get because well it's amazon they have pretty sure all the money literally in the world so this could be really interesting and it could definitely be a challenger to what's going on with project xcloud if amazon do actually pull it off right assuming of course this report is even accurate which it's very possible that it's not because that's just the nature of the rumor mill my friends so we're going to finish things are but with some news regarding Activision. Now you have undoubtedly seen the news swirling around the internet that Bungie and Activision have parted ways and Bungie have actually gone out the door with a suitcase tucked under one arm and Destiny tucked under the other. And for Activision this hasn't still gone particularly well for them in terms of their stocks and their investors as their stock price dropped just over 7% after the split was announced last night and the price of individual share has gone from just over $51 or just over £40 to just under, sorry just over $47 or just over £37. Now when this was announced yesterday that Destiny and Activision were parting ways along with the course developer Bungie, Activision were of course trying to play the optimist and they said quotes they do not expect to recognise material value, operating income or operating loss from the Destiny franchise in 2019, basically saying that Destiny wasn't really making them enough to really be that a concern that they no longer had it under their umbrella but it seems their investors were not convinced by this statement and this is reflected in their share prices even if it obviously it wasn't making as much money as activision wanted it to you know versus the cost of running servers and obviously paying the people who actually made the game all that sort of stuff they're still losing the rights to a very significant ip and regardless of your opinions on destiny it's really not my thing at all i've never played it uh, it's just this is not my thing it just i think i'd fall asleep the instant i played it it's just not for me at all but it's very popular, even if Destiny 2 is a bit of a disappointment to a lot of Destiny fans from what I've seen. It's still a huge IP, and this is a pretty significant loss for Activision in terms of that, even if it wasn't worth it in terms for them purely in a sort of a revenue sense. They have 
definitely taken a bit of a hit in, in the eyes of obviously investors and gamers as well. And this is kind of the last thing they needed after their stock dipped again after the disastrous announcement of Diablo Immortal. So Activision not really having the best time of it as of late. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Do let me know your thoughts on the sound levels in the description below this video. I have seen your comments on how low my audio is being and I am really trying to get it up there. It seems no matter how much I turn it up, it's still really quiet. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but I am trying my best guys. But let me know your thoughts. If it's still quiet, just let me know. Anyway, that's me done. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.